This was the hardest part, I think. Guys, I'm busy. <laughs> Hello, welcome to Moon Belly Makes. My name is Katrina, welcome to my home. Today I'm going to share with you part one of two of how I made a quilt that shows the life cycle of a butterfly for my new baby niece. I wanna give you a little bit of backstory. So this whole project starts with a little bit of a transformation of my own. So when my husband Josh's brother and his wife were expecting their first child, I got very excited because I knew I wanted to make a quilt for that new baby. My mom always makes quilts for all the new babies that come into our life and I wanted to follow in her footsteps and kind of continue that tradition with this branch of my family tree. So back in 2019, my nephew Austin was born, my first nephew, and I made him this solar system quilt that has all of the planets, asteroid belt, and it has our moon as well. I also included a little you are here embroidery over the earth because I wanted to give the little guy some context and also just like a sense of wonderment when he looked at this quilt. About halfway through making the quilt, I realized that they might have more kids. And if they do, I was like, what can I possibly make that can match the solar system in terms of like how amazing it is? I had to think about what I would make for the next kid that could be like sciency and cool and like wonder and amazement. But I'd already given the entire solar system to my nephew. So I actually remember stitching down the planets and thinking about this. And it came to me that if they did have another kid, I could, after doing this like big, vast wonder of the solar system, I could do like a tiny little wonder and focus on metamorphosis, specifically the life cycle of a butterfly. And that was three years ago. So when we found out that they were expecting our new niece, I knew it was time. <laughs> and I was honestly so excited to get started. I thoroughly loved this process, like from start to finish. It was just all fun to figure out, fun to do. It went by with ease. <laughs> and in some ways it's very meta, you know, the transformation of these random pieces of fabric into a quilt that tells a story is a metamorphosis of its own, right? <laughs> Anyways, here's how I did it. The first step of this project was to come up with the design. I knew I wanted to include all four stages of the life cycle of a monarch, from egg to caterpillar to chrysalis to butterfly, but how to arrange that onto a quilt took a little bit of figuring. Once I had the basic idea of design, it was time to dive into my mom's fabric stash and pick out the perfect fabrics. Really Some choices were complicated. It's pretty close. It's pretty close, it's just not as shiny. That's a little bluer, which is maybe more correct. Yeah, I think. And some choices were immediately obvious. Oh, 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 leaves. <laughs> <laughs> After some more digging, we had a few options for each element. So we laid them all out on the background fabric and looked at them together to make the final decisions. And that's a beautiful print. Yeah. And this adds in, it does add in another green, which maybe we don't need to do. <laughs> I don't. I mean, nature has lots of green. Yes, but, that's true. but I think that that picks up the oranginess too. Mm -hmm. And we narrowed it down to these fabrics. When I got home with the fabrics, Pete helped me unpack them and I began to lay everything out and get to measuring. Once I knew the exact size of the background fabric, I was able to determine how everything else would be placed so I could make correctly sized templates for all of the components. I happened to be doing this project in October in a swing state, so we had gotten a billion political attack mailers which magically make fabulous templates. They were the perfect weight of cardstock and they were free. Monarch butterflies only lay their eggs on a plant called milkweed so I pulled up a picture of a milkweed leaf. I taped two mailers together and then folded them in half so I could get perfect symmetry. Using a Sharpie, I did my best to copy the shape of a leaf onto the cardstock. I repeated the process with the other leaves, with the chrysalis, butterfly, and the egg, and then I did my famous laptop tracing hack to make the caterpillar. If you ever choose to trace using your laptop screen as a light table, please go to my video about how I made my block printed thank you cards 
for all of the details of how I do this safely. Once all of the templates were cut out, I laid out my background fabric again and made sure that everything would fit. And then with my mom's help on FaceTime, I designed the stem and figured out how everything would actually be made. A little bit at the top and curve it a little bit so that the leaf comes off of that curve. So it kind of goes, it'll go kind of like up the quilt, it'll look like this, and then it'll just kind of curve back that way and turn yeah, into the leaf. Yeah. It's a stem. Okay, so then here, okay, that's a great answer. Now I have another question though. On the leaf, should the stem be the green or the brown? <laughs> <laughs> I'd say that's a matter of taste. I might I, go with green. Okay. If you wanted to, instead of making it like a hard 90 degree angle kind of thing, you could make a, a little, you know. Oh, so, so like, not, so like this so part is curved like that? Oh, that's a good idea. I cut a few things a little smaller, made the template for the stem, and cut out bite marks on one of the leaves, the one that the caterpillar was sitting on, and then the design part was done. For the caterpillar, I knew I wouldn't be able to find fabric with the perfect yellow, black, and white stripes, so I decided to basically make my own fabric by piecing together strips of each color. I laid my tracing paper template directly on my picture and used black and gold markers to mark how thick the stripes were. I counted how many I needed, and then I cut my fabric into strips, making sure to leave enough extra space for the seam allowance on each side. Well, that feels like pretty good progress for day one. The thing I am definitely happiest about is how beautiful the butterfly template came out. It looks a lot better than I was anticipating. I don't know why, I just, I was nervous about it. And I think, I think it looks really good. I was going to start cutting out all the other pieces, but then I realized I don't have interfacing. I don't know, I just totally blanked on it. But I definitely want interfacing for all of the pieces that I'm gonna applique down so that I'm not worried about them stretching or kind of getting distorted or puckery or lumpy. So I'm gonna have to go get some interfacing. Probably get something like a medium weight. I don't know, we'll see. I'm excited, it's looking good. There's always a point in the project where I'm like imagining it for a really long time and kind of visualizing what it's going to be. And then, okay, I've got my materials together, but like this first day of like actually seeing it come together, it's like, oh, it's just like such a relief to know like, okay, my ideas are actually going to work. Not all of them, right? Some things have had to change already and that's going to continue happening throughout the project. Like it's always like that. But at least I'm not totally off the mark. It's going to work and it's going to be good too. Ooh, I'm so excited. <laughs> so I'm gonna get things cleaned up here and make some dinner. Salmon for dinner. They have a duckmobile out front of the store. I don't know why, but it's darn cute. Okay, I made it to the fabric store. I need to get some interfacing. I need thread. I'm gonna get black thread and also green to match um, this fabric for the leaves. The last thing that I need is the fabric for the backing. So that's, that's the fun part. That's where I really have some choice and it's gonna be a little bit more creative and I need one and three quarter yards of that. So here goes. There were a ton of great options for backing fabric and even a lot of butterfly fabrics, but I ended up picking this super cute dainty print because it felt like the little sister version of the background fabric that I had picked for the front. 
Once I was back home, me and my feline assistant got to work adding the interfacing I had also gotten at the fabric store to the back of each fabric. Iron-on interfacing is a fabric stabilizer that has a heat activated glue on one side. When you place the gluey side of the interfacing on the back of the fabric you want to stabilize and then iron it, it will basically melt and adhere and create a thicker fabric that won't lose its shape. While it is possible to put the interfacing on after you've cut out your shape, it's really horrible and not fun to get perfectly lined up. And when it's not lined up, you run the risk of getting that glue on your ironing surface, which can then get on your iron or other fabrics in the future and make a very hard to clean up mess. So here you'll see me cutting out approximate shapes of interfacing and fabric for each item on the quilt and adding the interfacing first before cutting everything out. You can also see that I am using a piece of undyed fabric called muslin as a press cloth or a fabric that goes on top of the whole interfacing process to protect the iron even further, just in case. After the easy pieces were cut out, I turned to making the caterpillar. I had cut out a boatload of these very thin strips of yellow, black, and white, and started stitching them together in the correct order that they show up in nature. There were some thin black strips and some thicker black strips, so I did my best to keep track of those as I stitched. I added in a few strategic triangular shapes to allow for the caterpillar to curve while keeping the stripes going in the right direction. Once I had sewed together about 45 strips, the basic shape of the caterpillar began to emerge. As you can see in my reference photo here, monarch caterpillars have the most adorable little feet, so I wanted to do their adorableness justice. There are three pointy feet in the front and four chunky ones near the middle of the caterpillar. So I cut out some very little pieces in the black and white fabrics and stitched them together to make seven cute little caterpillar tootsies. I added some interfacing to the stripey fabric and then cut out the shape by tracing my template. I stitched on the feet and the caterpillar was done. Okay, hi, welcome back. You haven't gone anywhere. It's just been a couple days since I've worked on this. Uh, so welcome back to me. So excited to show you this next part, what I worked on a couple days ago. I interfaced and cut out all of the pieces that are going to go into the butterfly and I think it just looks way better than I thought it was going to look. I just kind of freehanded it along the pattern that I had. This is like not a real technique, but it worked for me. So maybe now it's a real technique. I took the pattern piece that looked like this and then just kind of drew on it with Sharpie where I thought the orange shapes needed to be uh, based off of this picture that I was following. And then I just made the lines in between all of the orange spaces darker with Sharpie like that. It kind of had the look of how the wing is, like the orange on top of the black. And then I just numbered the pieces and cut them out. So I have now all of these tiny little pieces. This is like one of the bigger ones. And then I cut them out and I made sure to rotate them. So, so one was this way for one wing and one was this way for the other wing so that they would be the mirror images of each other. Uh, I used this as my template to lay them out to make sure that they were in the right order. But I labeled just lightly with pencil that this is shape number one for the right side. I don't know, I just kind of made it up as I went and it seems like so far it's working because it looks so good, but some of these pieces are so small. Like, ooh, it's so tiny. Even though the butterfly is like kind of big. So I am going to do a test run and make sure that I can actually stitch these pieces down and have them look okay. But 
I think uh, if I can get the stitching to work, if I can get my machine to cooperate in the way that I want to, I think this is gonna look really good. So here it goes. So in a zigzag stitch, your needle goes left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. And if you are going to be going around a curve like this, you wanna stop with your needle in the outside of the, of the fabric so that when you turn it and keep going, you don't have a V opening where there isn't any stitching. Okay, I acknowledge this is really hard to see because it's orange on orange, but I don't know if you can see right there, look, you can see where I had the needle on the inside when I lifted the presser foot and turned the fabric a little bit. So there's just that little bit of fabric. You can even see the interfacing kind of peeking out right here. It's just not as smooth around in that little place. And here you can see where it's, the threads are kind of crossed over. And that is where I had it on the outside and I did it on the outside all the way around everywhere else, which is why there's no other gaps. I just did that to show you. Uh, Cause it's a, you know, cute little, cute little trick. I am happy with my tests. I'm just gonna pin down all the pieces actually. And then I'm gonna start sewing them. I'm gonna use the orange thread for all the orange pieces. And then I'm gonna switch to black thread for the black pieces. So sit back, relax and enjoy. This is probably gonna take like an hour. No, no, let's time it. Let's see. They're so, so pretty. I'm like, I'm pretty proud of myself. There's no question that you're looking at a butterfly wing, you know? It's just exactly what it needs to be. And while I was doing this, I was trying to think of why I'm like so obsessed with how long all of this is taking, but I just really want this to be done before the baby gets here, before she gets here. I wanna be able to give this to her. And it's just a few weeks away. In between now and then, there's a lot of holidays and travel, so I just, I just, I really wanna make sure it's done, but I think that this is the most complicated part. I hope this is the most complicated part. I mean, it's the only part that has these like tiny little pieces. Um, so this is done, the caterpillar is done. It should be pretty smooth sailing from here on out. I'm excited to see it all come together. I think the colors are just so pretty and it's, it's just working and I'm happy about it. So that concludes part one. Please stay tuned for part two, where I do all of the finishing on the quilt. So I'll be stitching the pieces to the background fabric. I will be quilting the whole thing together, finishing the edges, adding the embellishments, the embroidery, and then a pocket on the back to put the hanging rod in. So 
All of the finishing stuff will be shown in part two. In the meantime though, you can check out the post for this video and for this project on my blog. It has a little bit more detail than I'm able to share in the video and also on my blog and here on YouTube, I have more DIY projects as well as a bunch of stuff in the kitchen, both my own recipes and my great British baking project. So if that speaks to you, I invite you to check it out. You can also find me on Instagram and we can stay connected that way. But for now, thank you so much for sharing this little slice of time with me. I hope that you have enjoyed watching part one of this project and I hope that you'll come back for part two to see it all come together. I hope you have a beautiful rest of your day and I'll see you next time. Bye. Pete, I literally stood up for one second and you take my spot. That's rude. Sorry, baby, that's my seat. Yeah, you understand me.